Well, good morning and welcome to Exmouth Baptist Church, our second service live together in this sanctuary. And it's so good to be together. Yet, it's good to be to welcome all our friends and loved ones via our web recording. And I pray that they are well and that we tell them that we miss them very much. But those of the year can worship God together. And that's such a privilege to worship our God together, isn't it? Um, I'd ask you to pray for uh, Holy Trinity this morning. They're doing their first half an hour service. And in Little Am, they're doing a half an hour service. But no other church at the moment has made a decision. Please pray for Brixington. Brixington will be looking to start in August. Um, we pray for Simon and his wife, they're going on holiday for two weeks and then the church want to open when he is back. So they'll be opening up in August. But I'd ask you also to pray for this COVID situation. Their government are now saying this morning that they're expecting a second swirl this winter unless they get an antidote. And we pray that it doesn't come like this. And I, I was just talking to Jan, she, was saying she spent time with her family, it was wonderful, wasn't it Jan? And we had our granddaughter down yesterday, and we got to spend time with her and take her for lunch while her partner went photography on Dartmoor. And they were models, and I said to him teasingly, I hope it's not a glamour model. He went, no, 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 Darcy would kill me. So he had a good day. But things are getting back to normal. And so without further ado, let's, well we can't join together and sing, and you can't see the, see the words, but you will be able to see the words by next week. But we're going to start our time together with a song called Adoration. Jesus 
And we owe him our very lives. And so we're going to sing, All Heaven Declares. The glory of the Who can compare with the beauty of the risen Lord? Forever he will be the lamb upon the throne. I gladly bow. today. We're going to talk about prayer and we're going to talk about obedience in worshipping God. And if we want to see the church grow, the church of our Lord Jesus Christ grow, it is through prayer and obedience to him. And we look at how the early church trusted in God and trusted in the Holy Spirit and was obedient to the calling of the Holy Spirit. And so we're going to sing because when Christ gave his life for us, grace came down. Amazing grace, my chains are gone. My 
because they don't play it like I play it. I wish they would, but they don't. So, onwards, upwards, let's come to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we are so overjoyed to be in your presence this morning, Lord. And we know, Lord, that we, you are with us wherever we go, Father. We are never alone, but it's good to meet with one another in this sanctuary and in this place, Father God. And we thank you, Lord, that you have allowed us to do so. And Father, we just ask, Lord, that you will be amongst us this morning in power, Lord. That you will be ever present in our hearts and in our lives. That you will inspire us, Father God, this morning to be transformed into the people that you wish to be. To be likenesses of your Son, Father. And we ask, Lord, that you will find our worship acceptable, Lord. For it's not done, Lord, out of a sense of vanity or performance. No, out of love for you and that you sent your only son to die for each of us Lord on that cross in Calvary Lord and we thank you Lord that we have son and daughtership with you Father God and we ask this morning that you will be pleased to be amongst us for we ask this in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ Amen well, before we have our reading for this morning, which incidentally comes from Acts chapter 3, verses 1 to 10, we're going to share a song again. And it's a lovely old song, As the deer pants for water, so my soul it pants for you. <laughs> You alone 
he is our heart's desire, is he not? He is the one that we live for. The one we would die for if called to. And so this morning, we come to the sharing of our God's word. And as I said, our reading this morning comes from Acts chapter 3, verses 1 to 10. Just Acts 3, 1 to 10. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple. At that time of prayer, at three in the afternoon. Now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate, called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, Silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up. And instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet, began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognised him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. May the Lord bless his word to each of us. And as we look at this, open it up to our hearts that we may learn from it. Well, I want to tell you, I had an accident. Are you all sorry to hear that, aren't you? Yes. A couple of weeks ago, and my wife doesn't know this, I went for a bike ride across the seafront. Because if some of you might know, I bought one of these e-bikes, you know, assisted pedaling. It won't go without you pedaling it. I had one which was a throttle and I didn't like that. I wanted one where you had to put some effort in. So off I set for a morning bike ride. And I was going across the seafront towards Orkham Point. And as it always happens, as always happens, this dreaded thing ran. And I was distracted for a moment. Didn't see a little pothole. Next thing I knew, off I came the bike. Now, first thing I done was look around because I was embarrassed, to be honest. I was embarrassed. I was really embarrassed and ashamed. I got up, inspected my body. Well, that was all right. I didn't have, I put my hands out and stopped myself, and I was all right. I got up, inspected my body, kept on cycling. But as I reflected on this, I was reminded of others who have fallen during these uneven times, and some who have not been seen, and we haven't seen. And I started thinking of those who relapse maybe into alcohol, depression or drugs and among those who are elderly and isolated for those in hospital and in nursing homes and those who are grieving and sad because they haven't been given the opportunity to um, say goodbye to their loved ones at funerals and memorial services And earlier this week, I started reading through the book of Exodus, and I was struck by the truth that God sees everyone. We can't hide from God, you know. We might think we can. We might think we can hide from God, but we cannot hide from God. The Bible tells us that God heard their groaning in Exodus, and God remembered, God saw the people of Israel, and God knew he said, I have surely seen the afflictions of my people and have heard their cry. I know their sufferings and I have come down to deliver them. And when they heard that the Lord had visited the people of Israel and he had seen their affliction, they bowed their heads and worshipped. Bowed their heads in worship and prayer. You see, we need to ask God to help us see and serve the most vulnerable. If we want to see the church grow, it is through prayer and the obedience of serving him and 
the calling of the Holy Spirit. Yet we still need to understand that we are not called all to do the same thing. No. But we're all capable of doing the same things. To build God's church. To see it. Flourish. You see, the book of Acts tells us how the Lord provided for his disciples. And in this book we see the birth of the church on the day of Pentecost. That was the day which can never be repeated. No, it can't be repeated. But we can have a refilling of the Holy Spirit every single day, every single moment. Because the Holy Spirit has come to live within believers within God's people, the great comforter. He was and is living in believers' hearts. And he is willing to fill our hearts with his love and power. You see, just as Bethlehem cannot be repeated, neither can we repeat Pentecost. No, but we do need the power of the Holy Spirit today. We need to thank God he is within this world, convicting the world and restraining evil in this world. And we live at the moment in trying and evil times. But this morning, we're going to look at an interesting experience in the life of that young church. And we're going to look at that healing of that lame man. And there are three things that we can learn as we study about this remarkable incident. Now that's a good Baptist sermon, you know, three points, usually starting all in the same letter, and you have to wear a beige suit, but I haven't got the jacket on. That was a joke when we were in Baptist college, that our leader at the time um, was a man who always wore beige suits, <laughs> always preached on, at three points, all starting with the same word. But I'm going to break that. First thing we want to look at is how, the help, how it will help us to understand what has brought the church to this point today. Second, we will see that the obedient believers were praying constantly. And third, it will help us see that what the world needs is someone to reach out a hand of faith to the people. And that's the church of the day, my brothers and sisters. We are the Jesus' disciples today. So in the book of Acts, we see that the early church had been given the command. A command and two promises. The command was to stay in Jerusalem. We read that in Acts 1, verse 4. That once, when Jesus was eating with them, he told them not to leave Jerusalem. He said, wait to receive the promise from the Father, which I have told you about. So here we have promise number one, that they would receive power from the Holy Spirit. Jesus told them that John baptised with water, but in a few days you will be baptised with the Holy Spirit. Now there are many, many, many different views upon this. Our more evangelical and Pentecostal brothers will say that there are different things that need to be done. And I'm not going to go into that this morning. But I am stating this near now. When you receive the Lord into your heart, you receive the Holy Spirit. Fully. Full stop. There's not a two-part conversion here. So we've got no excuse to say, ah, well, I can't do what my brother does because I haven't got the power. You've only got the power, not got the power, because you don't ask for the power. That's your problem here. That's all of our problem. We don't ask. If you don't ask, you don't get. So we see that Jesus says that they will be baptised with the Holy Spirit. Promise two was Jesus said when he was seen going up into heaven that he would come back the same way again. But you see the difference between the church today and the church then, the church then obeyed and lived by what God, Jesus said. When he commanded them to stay in Jerusalem, that's exactly what they did. And guess what? They received what they said they would receive. They received the Holy Spirit and the power. Yet they were still waiting for the second coming. But their lives, 
they lived their lives to the full in the victory and joy that Christ had given on Calvary. Maybe that's a lesson for us today, that we need to live in that joy and glory. Forget saying our basket's half empty. Think of it's half full and it's getting fuller by the minute. Because God is doing more in our lives. God is bringing more to us. So maybe we will need to see that in a different way. So we see that they were obedient. And God did indeed bless them with his Holy Spirit. Yet when we read about the Holy Spirit, it's important for us to always remember that the Holy Spirit is not an and. No. It is an equal partner with God and Christ. There is a special thing, the Holy Trinity. It's not an an. It's a real living thing. Just as the Father is living, so is the Son, so is the Holy Spirit. You see, when we surrender our wills totally to God, we enter into the promise that was given in Isaiah 190. There he tells us, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. So often I hear Christians say, ah, but I only wish that I was more able to do things. We are all able to do things. But as, as I said, we don't all do the same things. We're not all called to be evangelists. We're not all called to be healers. We're not all called to be prophets. But each of us has an important role to play in the church. In the body. Forget the church. Call it the body. Because as Christ said, there's many parts. Paul said, isn't there? There's many parts. We can't all be heads. We can't all be arms. We can't all be hands, eyes, voices. But if each of us has a, a very important part. And one of the most important parts we play is praying for each other, praying for each other and God's work in this land. That's our key thing here. Being obedient to prayer, be being obedient to the call of God. And it's said that if we are, we will eat the good of the land. That was God's promise to Israel. That if they obeyed him, they would eat the good of the land. But if they rebelled, the very next verse says, they would be eaten or devoured by the sword. Many Christians struggle in the attempt to be good. And are even exhausted by their efforts. Because they have never truly surrendered their wills to God. To the way of Christ. It tells us in the book of Jeremiah, in too many ways, that we are clay in the potter's hand. And the clay cannot tell the potter what will be made out of it. The potter makes what it wants out of the clay. And we need to know that. So as with Jeremiah, we need to let God do with us as he will. The lesson to learn here is that God has the right to remold his people. He can remove them, he can judge them, he can build them up, he can bless them. But it is God who decides, not the clay. The clay itself has no power whatsoever. And that's the thing to learn when we try to do good. It's not us that are doing good. It's Christ in us that is doing the good. If we do things in the power of the Holy Spirit, it's then that we will see the church grow. God molds us. God builds us. And we have to see that it was obedience that brought that church to this point. We need to be obedient people to God. Always praying. You see, we can see the importance of prayer in the early church in chapter 1. They were praying when the Holy Spirit came. And then in chapter 3, when they were on their way, where were they going? To pray. To a prayer meeting. And this would have been a very normal way of life, the Bible tells us. 
And then we see about the man who was at the gate of Beautiful. As John, Peter and John were going to pray. And they were going to share the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And you see, it wasn't nothing unusual for beggars to be gathered. Now, I, I, a lot of people have said, oh, you couldn't watch that film. But I remember years ago watching a very controversial film called The Life of Brian. And in there, there was a beggar. And he said, half a denarii for an ex-leper. And the, two, the man stopped and said, what do you mean, ex-leper? He said, you can't be an ex-leper. He said, there was. He said, Jesus healed me. Gone, he said. So beggars were a normal part of society in and around to the Jerusalem temple. They, they were there all the time. They were always looking for arms and they were always asking for gifts. Yet Peter and John were poor. They had nothing. They lived on what people would give them. So they had no money to give him. But they had something so much more powerful, didn't they? They had the love of the Lord Jesus Christ to share for him. The healing power of God's spirit. And what a lovely contrast that was. That gate was called beautiful, yet this man who had been carried there was crippled and couldn't move. It's a contradiction, isn't it? A beautiful gate and a crippled man. But people were more, more impressed by what they did than that beautiful gate. That that man was healed and he got up and he was jumping and he was shouting and he was praising God. You see, there's something else to get home into our hearts here this morning. In verse 4, Peter and John are not timid survivors. Yes, they were all devastated when the Lord died on the cross. Yet when he rose and he met with them, they became bold because they had the power of the Holy Spirit. You see, when that man requested help, Peter fixed his eyes on him. And Peter said, look at us. And I would imagine that Peter's gaze must have been very intense and piercing to hold that man's gaze. The man didn't have to be asked twice to look at the apostles. He immediately looked. Why? Because it was the power of the Holy Spirit speaking. It wasn't Peter and John speaking. It was the power of the living God. The God who spoke creation into being. That's the kind of power that Peter and John were speaking with. They were speaking with the power of the risen Lord Jesus Christ. There's no wonder that man didn't have to be asked twice to look at them. And since he believed those men could help him, he knew he was going to receive something from him. He didn't know what, but he knew because they'd spoken to him in such a way. And here we find that Peter had absolute confidence in the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's what the church today is lacking. Peter had absolute confidence. The power would go along with the words that he spoke. Because why? It wasn't him doing it, it was Jesus doing it. Jesus tells us time and time again. Greater things than I have done, you will do. But my question to us all this morning is, why don't we do it? Because we lack the surrender, the commitment and the trust that the early church had. When they spoke, they knew they were speaking with the power of the Holy Spirit. They knew without a doubt that God was going to do something amazing. And that man waiting to receive some gift of money, Peter said to him, silver and gold, I do not have. 
All I do have, I give you. In the name, and here's the important thing. He didn't say in the name of Peter, did he? Get up and walk. No. He said in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And those words are so important. It was, wasn't Peter or John doing it. It was, in fact, and on only could be, the risen Lord. You know, today the church, in many quarters, has wealth. Lots of wealth. It has much wealth. Yes, it does. Maybe not this church. But just think about it. All the churches, the Church of England, um, the Catholic Church, all the other churches have this load of wealth, don't they? But in saying that, the Baptist Union, and if you added up all the individual churches in the Baptist Union, although we are independent, this building's worth a pretty penny, isn't it? The manse is worth a pretty penny. So you see that we've got a lot of wealth. In fact, I think it would be wealthier than Microsoft, Toyota, Ford, even Mr. Trump. We are wealthier than any other organisation. Yet, Peter, notice what he does, the beggar, expected to receive money, but Peter said, silver and gold I do not have. We don't have silver and gold. We have the power of the Lord Jesus Christ coursing through our, our veins. And it is that power that we need to give people. You see, the apostles were poor. They had, they had enough for themselves. Peter and John didn't have any money to give them. No, they didn't. They, but they had something much better. They professed a power from heaven that would cure this man. And we have each been given that same power. Peter said to that man, rise up and walk. They would have been empty words, as I've said, if it hadn't been preceded or prefaced with in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth rise up and walk you see Peter didn't give this man what he want, requested what he wanted he gave him what he needed and that's a lesson for us to learn here when we say oh, why do these troubles come upon us why, does this, why can't I be like Someone who up the road who has three holidays abroad a year, has a brand new camper van, drives a beautiful Mercedes convertible. God gives us what we need, not what we want. He will never see us go without food. He will never see us on the streets. He will help. We may at a time be short of food. We may at a time need shelter but he will always answer the prayer so God gives us what we need not what we want so don't go praying to him saying what the lottery numbers on Friday because he ain't going to give you one I know it no I haven't <laughs> the man thought that his only problem was that he couldn't walk but what he really needed much, much more, he needed Jesus. And that's what the world is like today, my dear friends. It needs Jesus. So we come on to the command that we are to take the gospel out to the people. We live in a crippled world that needs help. But only Jesus can and will change the world. If we share the love and power of Jesus, you see, it's not the silver or gold that the world needs. No, what the world needs is Jesus. And it needs him now. And it looks to us to be the, that vessel for him. So you see, and have seen, it was obedience that brought the church to this point. And we saw that the obedient believers were praying. In verse 10, 7 it tells us, and he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. Immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. You see, when Peter took the man's hand and his feet and his ankles strengthened, it was not their own 
strength? Did it heal it? No. Peter had seen Jesus do this when he healed his mother-in-law. And at other times when Jesus healed people. Jesus did it in the power of the Father. And we are called to do it in the power of our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, when believers reach out in faith, great things happen. When we start as believers, start living that way. Demonstrating that what we believe is true. This struggling world will find the help it needs. The need today is for Christians to live spirit-filled lives. To reach out to a needy and broken world. In conclusion, God will do mighty things to change crippled lives in our world when we fully trust him. He has changed my life, he has changed your life. And he can change the lives of millions and others. But it will be done through our prayer, our obedience, our surrender, and our trust in God. The, the apostle received the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. And that was a miracle. However, the Holy Spirit is given to every believer today. There is no excuse. There is no ducking the question, do I have the power of the Holy Spirit? Because you do. When we have learned today, I hope, that prayer and obedience to God was what brought the church from its small beginning to this point today. Now is the time we need to reach out to someone and share the gospel of Christ. God is building his church in this needy world. But he's doing it through the witness of his people. By his power. Not with silver and gold and bribing people. But by love and the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, we're going to sing a song again. Well, no, I keep saying we're going to sing a song. Sorry, I'm going to sing a song. You're not allowed to sing a song. I wish you were allowed to sing a song. i got to be honest. But it's one you might have heard, but it's a new one to the church. It's one by my wife's favourite Christian songwriter, Darlene Zuchek of Hillsong. And it's called At the Cross. We have to start again for some reason. We've got no music. Oh, we're having technical difficulties today. It's from the sound desk we've got a problem. So it's muted. Right, start it again now. Start it again, Greg, please. Now we'll do at the cross. We're having gremlins this week. Oh Lord, you search me. You know. No. Nope. 
cradle of tenderness. You have overcome the grave. Your glory fills the highest place. Walk and separate me now. Jesus' death, it is all in vain. It's at the cross that we find our strength. It's at the cross where we find the power to stand against all that is wrong in this world. It is not through our acts, but Christ's act, that we have the victory. Death has gone, the veil has been torn. And now I'd like to ask my dear brother, Mervyn, Come up and pray. waiting to hear from us. He's waiting to hear what's on our hearts because he does answer our prayers and he's, he's just waiting to connect with us this morning. So let's pray, shall we? Lord, firstly, I want to thank you for all the answers to prayer that have occurred. Lord, we sometimes forget to do that, Lord, and sometimes I take it for granted that my prayers will be answered. But Lord, from the bottom of my heart, I thank you since so much answered prayer lately. So bless you for that. So we can now pray in confidence, knowing that our Lord will answer our prayers. So firstly, let's pray for our fallen, broken world. 
Lord, we thank you that you made this world for us to enjoy. And we now confess to you that through greed, selfishness, neglect, that we have messed it up. Please forgive us, Lord. And Lord, we think of all the injustice. And Lord, we ask that justice will flow like a river. Lord, we bring before you this awful pandemic, COVID-19. And Lord, when you walked with us on this earth, you spread your healing power everywhere you went. And now, Lord, through your Holy Spirit, we place in your loving care all who are affected by COVID. Lord, bring relief to the sick, console the bereaved, and protect those who care for us. And Lord, we pray that the pandemic may be got it under control and for the doctors and the scientists, researchers, whoever, working to find a vaccine and effective medicines. And Lord, if, uh, if indeed as we hear another spike is expected, we pray against that, Lord. We pray that something will be found before then. And now, Lord, we think about our country and as we begin to return to a more social daily life and restrictions lessen, may we be guided by the Spirit to ensure a safe environment for ourselves and for those around us, Lord. Lord, bring your spirit of calm into our hearts so that we can do things in confidence, Lord. And Lord, help all Christians to, to play their part in building your kingdom at this time. Lord, give us the wisdom to know our part and the courage to call out our leaders to bring about change, to bring about a green and just recovery in this land. And Lord, we think of our schools. Lord, strengthen our teachers and support and management staff. And Lord, they working in very, very difficult environments, Lord. And Lord, be with the parents as they have sought to teach their children at home. And Lord, and as schools return in September, Lord, I just pray that you will go before them and make safe environments, Lord, in those places. And Lord, we think of a couple of areas that are experiencing a, a challenge and, and an increase in the COVID cases. May you provide them with the grace for patience and the strength for vigilance in those places, Lord. And Lord, we do lift before you those who are afraid and upset, discriminated against and marginalised. Lord, as Christians, help us to reach out to them. Help us to let them know that we care, that you care, that they matter, that they are precious to you, Lord Jesus. And we think of our economy, and we would ask that you would give our leaders the wisdom to guide this nation of ours out of this crisis. Lord, open new opportunities, and may we learn to live differently as a nation. Help us to adapt. And I pray that this will be a nation where mutual respect for each other and for our environment is practised. And now we think about our fellowship. Lord, help us to build on our relationship-based community, a loving family. Help us to serve and bless each other mutually and look to you for guidance. Lord, we thank you for the gifts that you have given each one of us, individually and collectively, and help us to use them to further your kingdom. And Lord, bind us together in your perfect love. I pray, Lord, that you will give each one of us hearts and minds that are open to you, open to change open to stepping out of our comfort zone, open to reaching out. 
I pray that our eyes will see and perceive, our ears will hear and actually listen, that our words will be words of encouragement and comfort, that we will love and accept others who are very different from us. We pray for unity within diversity. We pray for this wonderful gift of forgiving others. And we pray for hearts that love and worship you. Lord, we now pray for the people that are struggling amongst us, Lord. Lord, I've had a couple of special requests to pray, especially for Molly, who is recovering from an operation at home, and for uh, Peter Edgy's dad, Don, who is in hospital. So we also pray for those awaiting test results. Lord, step into their anxiety. Bring your calming spirit into their very hearts. And Lord, we pray for those who struggle with addiction. May they look to you, Lord, and you only, Lord, for the best. Lord, we think of those suffering from anxiety or depression. Lord, show us how we can help, when to listen, what to do, and to be there for them. We pray for those who are still grieving loved ones, where there is a hole in their heart. Lord, we think of our friends in the care homes, and we think of those who live alone, or even feeling lonely, or unloved. And we pray for those that care for them. And we pray that those that care for them won't feel it a struggle all the time. And Lord, we now pray for people on our hearts in a few moments of silence. Let's just give to God who's on our hearts now. Amen. May they sense your presence. May they feel your power. May they know your love. May their bodies be overwhelmed with light and truth, with healing and wellness. And uh, Jackie asked me to say thank you for prayers as well. So help us to experience the comfort of the Holy Spirit within us and the fellowship of this loving church family around us. Help us to show your love and grace to all of those around us, that we would be seen as a bright beacon of light and of hope and of faith. And you, Lord Jesus, are light of this world, and we thank you for the hope that you have given us. Lord, help us to give our worries to you daily, Lord, at the foot of that cross, and above all, Lord, teach us to trust in your unfailing love. For you have promised us, never will I leave you, and never will I forsake you. So thank you, Lord. Thank you that you hear and answer these our prayers. Thank you that you have overcome the world. Thank you that you hold all of heaven and earth in your loving hands and that you have given us the promise of eternity in our hearts forever. Whatever tomorrow may bring, we will praise your name forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mary. Bless you. Here your heart. As you have noticed, we are not allowed to hand around these but there is a basket if you wish to give to the Lord for his work in this town as you leave that way as the saying goes one way system not like the two gentlemen yesterday who decided they would turn outside here watch them and drive up the one way street and then wondered why people beat their arms at that. 
dig along the side, it does it. But thank you, Mervyn, for your prayers, for everyone, for what God has laid on your heart. And I know that our God hears our prayers and he answers our prayers. And so, we're going to sing, well, I'm going to sing, I keep saying this, and I've got to get out of it at the moment. Our last hymn together for this week is called Beautiful One. So wonderful is your amazing love. Your cross has broken mercy over me. No eye can read, no ear has heard, no heart could fully know how glorious, how beautiful you are. Beautiful one. And may that love, Father God, leave with us this morning, Father. May we be obedient in prayer, deed, and thought for you. May we open up our hearts to those who are lost and lonely. And fill their hearts with your love and your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And may the Lord bless and keep you. May his face shine upon you. And may his strength and mercy reign in each of our lives. Amen. Now, tea and coffee is available, but please remain seated. You will be, I will ask you if you wish tea or coffee, raise your hands. Who would like coffee? 